All right, here we are. You get it? Yes, sir. All right, so basically what I was going to say is when God looks at a Christian, he doesn't see nasty, filthy, dirty. You know, we've heard all of our lives, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. We were sinners, and we were saved by grace. Our identity is not based on our performance. Our identity is based upon the performance of Christ. The Word of God says in Romans chapter 6, Galatians 2.20, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It says in Romans chapter 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, is crucified with him. Something that has been crucified is dead. It's completely dead. And in, zo in God's kingdom, there are no zombies. There's, no, uh, there's none of this zombie false resurrection. The only resurrection is the resurrection from the dead. Where when Christ was exalted to the right hand of the Father, we were also exalted to the right hand of the Father with him. When God looks at us, he sees the identity of Christ inside of us. We have no life. Our life is Christ. Paul says to live is Christ and to die is gain. Righteousness is not a product of our performance. Righteousness is a product of Christ's performance. It says in 1 Corinthians, it says that Christ has become to us. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says that he has become to us righteousness, wisdom, sanctification, and redemption from God. Those four things, righteousness, wisdom, sanctification, redemption, those are from Christ. Those things are ours because they are Christ in perfection. So my whole point is, so many of the time, so much, so much of the time, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we just see sinner, we see nasty, we see the bad things we did yesterday. When in reality, though, that stuff's dead. It's in the grave. That's not who we really are. Who we are, we're a saint. We're a son of God. We're a partaker of the divine nature. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what it says in the Bible. We either have to take what man says and all these false false seminaries, false churches, using guilt and shame to try and motivate people to righteousness. If you think that works, go read Romans chapter 7. Paul was operating in a sensation of guilt and shame because he believed that he was called to obey the law in order to appease the wrath of God. What happened? He said, though I know what I should do, the harder I try to do what is right, I keep doing what's wrong. I know what's right to do, but for some reason I can't seem to do it. Why? Because he's living out a false identity. He's trying to create his own identity in his performance and works under the law rather than operating in the perfect performance and righteousness of Christ. It says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 6, it says that we produce fruit when we come to know the grace of God in truth, not when we try harder. I was in one of the major churches in Plano, probably one of the biggest churches in the entire world. It's renowned worldwide over for their amazing teaching. And basically, the pastor said, if you're a Christian, you can't get your life together. Here's what you need to do. You need to make a new dedication of your life to God, and you need to try harder to get your act together. Okay, that is not what the Bible teaches. That is operating under law. When you operate under law, you're operating in the flesh. You're not in the spirit. And the spirit of God is not going to help you to de deny the cross of Christ. When we think that we can justify ourselves by obeying laws, whether it's God's law or the own, our own law that we've created for ourselves, we're rejecting the perfect fulfillment of the law by Christ. The whole point is that we walk in righteousness, and righteousness by realizing that we have no life and Christ is our life. If we realize that Christ is our life, we realize that it's impossible for us to walk in darkness because it's impossible for him to walk in darkness. The process of sanctification is really not even a process because Christ is our sanctification. Sanctification simply is coming into the reality of what God has already done, not trying to establish a new reality. When Jesus was on the cross, one of the last things he said, as he's crucified, he said, it is finished. What did he mean, it is finished? He meant it is finished. Righteousness, sanctification, holiness, blamelessness, power, deliverance, healing. It's all finished at the cross. Christ lived a substitutionary life where he lived perfectly righteous because we have not lived perfectly righteous. When we accept him simply, when we accept Christ simply, everything that has been true about us in our life before we're in Christ, it is applied to him. And he has already been crucified on the cross. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. We all deserve to die for our sin. Yes, that's true. And we hear that in church every Sunday. But here's the thing. If someone already paid for my crimes, if someone already died for my crimes, then why are pastors telling me that I also need to die for my crimes if someone already did? If someone already paid my price, 
is God really so unrighteous that he's going to require payment twice for the same crime? No. God is righteous. Jesus already paid for my crime, and I don't have to. Period. In Jesus' name. Yeah. What's up, bro? There he is. Hey. Did I miss an appointment? No, no, oh, no, no. Okay. We didn't have an appointment. We just <laughs> figured, I tried to give you a shot, and you didn't. <laughs> is it really 11:50?